ETV Motorsports Live is live from the Texas Motor Speedway with our continuing coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series presented by Bob Earl Racing. Tonight, chase race number eight at the Texas Motor Speedway. The season's starting to come to a close, but the action only continuing to pick up. Hello, everybody. My name is Evan Pasoko. As always, joining me in the booth on this Monday night, Harrison Wildless. Harrison, after tonight, only two races to decide a champion. These drivers that are not in that number one spot got to pick it up because they're running out of time. Yeah, and uh, Chad Cole has to be feeling a little bit decent right now because he's got a 22-point advantage over second place. Uh, obviously, a, a big battle between he and Dwayne Vincent for a lot of the night. A couple of other guys creeping into the picture, though. C.J. Levere with a good run last week, for instance, 24 out of the lead. And so... Uh, Chad Cole needs two races with no mistakes. Dwayne Vincent, less pressure on him, thinking that he can go as hard as he needs to, really as hard as possible to try to make up that deficit, which uh, we've seen 20-point swings in multiple races this chase. It could happen again. And definitely, let's take a full rundown at the points as they stand right now. Again, with three to go, including tonight's race, it is Chad Cole up atop the standings in this chase here with 2,229 points. Second place, Dwayne Vincent entered last week's race 21 points down. Is going to leave it 22 points down in that second position. CJ Lavera, you mentioned, may be asserting himself now and making it a three-man race to the championship. 24 points back in third. You can't count these guys out. Three races, not a lot of time, but a lot can happen. Jose Gonzalez sitting in the fourth spot, 40 points back. Then you have Ronnie Potts in the fifth position 42 back and rounding up the top half of your chase contenders guy snyder the fourth in that sixth spot 47 off of points leader chad cole you know in seventh in points we've got justin wilson uh who certainly has the ability like guy snyder to get hot uh, he got his first win of the year right before the chase started at uh richmond and then won again at talladega so he's 49 back rich jet's been consistent most of the year coming off of a couple of good runs currently in eighth spot 52 back Steve Renner, three wins on the year, is 78 back in ninth, uh, ninth position. 10th uh, is John Abbott, 11th Mike King, and 12th currently Mark Bratcher, who's, uh, who's been trying to make a comeback after a, co a rough start to his chase. Got to take a look at the points leader again. Chad Cole has to be safe these next three races. Vincent and Lavert may feel like they're in a better position because they have nothing to lose. And let's look at last week's results. However, race number 33 on the season, Chase Race 7, was at the Martinsville Speedway. Late race contact between the top two in the points. Cole and Vincent shuffled up that running order, but it was Guy Snyder the fourth taking home the win after 200 long laps at the Martinsville Speedway. Jonathan Cadell taking home a solid second place finish. Rich Jett Rounding off the top three, C.J. Lover again capitalizing and inserting himself only 24 back now. He finished fourth last week, and Doug Roth taking home the fifth position. Yeah, Dave Lonza came home in sixth, and he was a car that looked like he had a chance for the win. Uh, just got uh, mired back in traffic, was a lot of beating and banging throughout the day. Ed Williams Jr. had a, a nice top ten finish, came home in seventh. Jose Gonzalez came home in eighth, followed by John Abbott and Steve Gottschalk rounded out the top ten. So then you have to look ahead to tonight's race, the Texas Motor Speedway. Again, chase race number 8 of 10. After tonight, two races will remain. We go to the Phoenix International Raceway and then followed by Homestead Miami Speedway to close off the season. How about tonight's track? Texas Motor Speedway, the Great American Speedway, asphalt surface. Another one of those 1.5 mile racetracks that we see so often over the quad oval front straightaway. Uh, four turns banking at 24 degrees. A capacity crowd of 191,000 people broke ground in April of 1995, opened the following year for construction cost of $250 million. Very historic racetrack and a track that is known for green flag racing. And for your points leader, Chad Cole, that may be what he wants to see to be able to play it safe. But right now in qualifying, Dwayne Vincent, Currently sitting in the provisional poll, Chad Cole P2. So it looks like like we see every week, every week here, rather, with the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series, those guys are going to be side by side for a majority of the race. Yeah, and Dwayne Vincent, make no mistake about it, these guys in the top running of the points, really almost all of the chase competitors, really good just about anywhere you go. Dwayne Vincent and Chad Cole, both good just about every track on the schedule. However, I have a lot of confidence in Dwayne Vincent when we go to these 1.5 mile speedways. Uh, now these cup cars make so much power, they, they are lifting a lot on entry to the corners. 
it takes a lot of uh, finesse to be on the right line, very line sensitive, and you're not you're not full throttle until you're basically on the straightaway. It's a lot of throttle control. Dwayne Vincent, I think, is one of the better speedway racers in the series. Well, possibly the best, but um, he's one of the better speedway racers, period, on iRacing, and I think these tracks really fit into his style uh, that he has honed over the last year or two, just gotten really good. So Dwayne Vincent picking up where he left off, you know, he was fastest in practice. Uh, he's uh, he barely right now on the pole. Uh, we'll have to see if that goes official as we get to the grid. Uh, but right now, Dwayne currently the uh, provisional pole sitter. But Shag Cole only two thousandths of a second off of that. And so uh, he's got the pressure on him to perform. Definitely Dwayne Vincent, 13 wins on the season. One of those became in the spring race at the Texas Motor Speedway. I believe it was race seven of this season coming home first. Chad Cole got a runner-up finish there earlier in the spring, but we're getting ready to go for the green flag. So we are now going to go down trackside for the national anthem performed by the Cactus Cuties. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was Another great job by the Cactus Cuties for the National Anthem and shout out to the Virtual Thunderbirds as well. It is official Dwayne Vincent into number 13, Havilene Ford Fusion, going to be sitting P1 and on the pole for tonight's race. However, shotgun on the field, row number one, second position, the 8 of Chad Cole. Starting third, Ronnie Potts showing some muscle in the number two car. Outside of him, the 26 of Jose Gonzalez. How about the fifth place car, the number four, CJ Lavare, third place in points, looking to make up some more points tonight, and Jonathan Cadell in the 31, starting in sixth. Rhett McBride in the number 15 will roll off in the seventh position, outside of him from eighth, the number 22 of AJ Browning. Inside row five, the ninth starting position is going to belong to the 27 of Guy Snyder, the fourth. Outside him, the 16 of Steve Ritter, P10. Starting 11th will be the number 14 of Joey Gatina. Alongside him, the number 10 of John Abbott. How about the 13th place car, the 43 of Doug Ross, starting 14th. Also the 33 of David Lanza. Starting 15th, the number 66 of Brian Harvey. And alongside him from 16th will be a newcomer, number 48, Kevin Linden. 17th starting position is going to belong to the number 17 of William Kemp and 18th the 38 of Mark Bratcher. Row number 10 has the number 91 of Steve Gottschalk. Alongside him, the number 19 of Marvin Turnmeyer Jr. Row 11, the 21st starting position, goes to the 18 of Barry Hines. Outside him, 22nd, the 78 of Keith Brooks Jr. Rolling up 23rd will be the number 5 of Bill Tomer. Outside of him, the number 04 of Mike King. Nick Silver in a 25 is also going to roll off the grid 25th position, not taking a time. And 26 starting position goes to the number 29 of Brennan Mercer. Starting 27th will be the number 36 of Rich Jett. 
Starting 28th, the number 12, Doug Wyatt. And rounding off the field, the 29th starting position is going to belong to the 65 of Ed Williams Jr. and John Wilco in the number 62 machine starting 30th. He rounds off your field again. 30 drivers are going to be taking to this 1.5 mile asphalt surface racetrack at the Texas Motor Speedway again for race 8 on the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series Chase for the Championship presented by Bob Earl Racing. So like it is every week, the top two in the championship are going to be the top two on the field and are going to bring us to our green flag as we work through turns three and four. Can LaVare and Vincent make up the ground necessary and will Cole stumble to allow them to do so with so few, so few mini races left? We're going to find out now because the Ford first racing Mustang pace car is working its way off of turn number four. About to dive down the pit road. There it goes. The field in the hands of Dwayne Vincent. At 60 on the loud pedal and the green flag is out. We're racing at the Texas Motor Speedway. Dwayne Vincent getting it out of a six car length lead into one. Chad Cole's going to hang on the second. Yeah, Dwayne Vincent, that's the perks of being the leader. You really control these restarts and can get a big jump. Uh, Chad Cole and Dwayne Vincent both running extremely competitive times in qualifying. Uh, for all the for everyone watching, this is the uh, the weather that the NIS series used last week. So partly cloudy, 78 degrees, north wind at two, hum relative humidity at 55 percent. Cole was a 28-58. These guys are hauling the mail around here. Chad Cole able to get into second position, and those two have put on quite the gap. To third place, Ronnie Potts also a strong qualifying effort. He's been a top 10 machine, holding strong right now in third position. One car having some trouble through one and two is a 27 of Guy Snyder the fourth. Right now in that 10th position on the inside, just got passed by the 16 of Steve Ritter. So Ritter's going to go around him to pick up that spot, so move Snyder back into 11th. Again, most, mostly single file throughout the field right now. Everybody trying to find where they're going to fit in line and ride around for a little bit. But it looks like Snyder may be under some more company because the 17 car of William Kemp is going to the inside in 1 and 2, trying to pick up another spot as the 27 pulls in line behind him and is going to lose another spot there off turn 2. Yeah, the 27 looking low, going for that crossover to get that position back in turn number three. As uh, as he does a little wiggle, slides up the track, but save, keeps the car off of the 17 above him. And what you notice here pretty early on is uh, just how challenging one and two could be. There's a bump right in the middle there where the tunnel goes underneath the racetrack, uh, the infield tunnel leading to the outside. And when they come over that bump, if you hit it wrong, it really offsets the balance of your car, can make you really tight or really loose, depending on how you have hit the corner. And uh, so Guy Snyder doing a wiggle early on, and that's how he started fading a little bit backwards. And now he's got it himself rolling again, uh, but uh, it just makes you lose some track position, lose some time, and he has, his, uh, he's, he has work to uh, make up now. Another driver that lost some track position in time that last time by is the 66 of Harvey. Harvey lost about four spots and currently being shown in the 17th position. He, he talked about turns one and two there, didn't quite get the entry that he wanted, pushed up the hill and got past. Uh, is able to get back in line now, try to get his rhythm back going, and was able to hold off the five of Bill Tomer, who uh, threatened to get on that inside through three and four. So it looks like, again, one and two is going to be that difficult spot for lots of these drivers, which is where the majority of the passing has been going on. But the battle continues between the 27 of Guy Snyder and the 17 of William Kemp. Uh, that is the battle for 11th and 12th position this time through one and two, the 17 car. Uh, about a car length or two off the back bumper of the 27 of Snyder, but he's going to get a run this time off two and throw it to the inside in three. Yeah, that's 17 of Kemp. Uh, I believe this might be his first full throttle start. I have not seen that name. A trouble right in front of them. The 16 car is around. Caught the apron. The 17 narrowly avoids it. Guy Snyder went to the grass to avoid it. So trouble early on there coming through three and four. I believe, I believe Steve Ritter got the apron, whether he had help or not. I'm not sure, but first caution comes out on lap number seven. Definitely caution flag out for the 16 car of Steve Ritter. Uh, you mentioned catching that apron possibly through the corner. Ritter entering tonight ninth in the championship standings. Uh, he just got a little bit loose there in the corner, came back up and uh, was assisted around um, without intention by the number 43 car of Doug Roth, the 16. Uh, spun it around off of four, collecting the 22 car. So the 22 car is going to get damaged as well. That's A.J. Browning, 17. You mentioned that the battle that we were watching, 
narrowly avoiding that, and then they pretty much scattered through the trial of grass, but I think everybody else mainly making it through without further incident, and a good thing to note is that none of our chase drivers really got caught up in it. However, we're coming down pit road. Vincent's going to lead them on, followed by Cole, Jose Gonzalez, and CJ Lovera. So the top three in points right now are sitting in the top four. Actually, Gonzalez is four, so the top four are the first four down pit road to make early pit stops here at Texas. And you'll see four tires just about all race on most pit stops. Two tires is a doable strategy here. Uh, you have to make sure you leave enough fuel out of it to not get too loose. Uh, but I, I would uh, imagine that most of these guys, or just about everyone, will go for four right now unless someone wants to try it out. Maybe a little bit of strategy later in the going. Uh, but just about everyone coming down pit road. Actually, it looks like one guy using the strategy is Brennan Mercer. Gaining a lot of spots on pit road. I'm going to check back and see if he missed his stall or just went with two tires. In fact, he missed his stall, so he might be coming back in next time by. Uh, but four tires is about everybody else. And definitely Dwayne Vincent would maintain that lead over Chad Cole coming off of pit road. Chad almost got him at the scoring loop, but could not quite get it done right now. One car that did not come down pit road that last time is the 27 of Guy Snyder, the fourth currently being shown as your race leader. Snyder sitting sixth in the points, only five points out of a top five. So that's something that him and his team are going to be shooting for for the end of the season, possibly staying out maybe to lead a lap get a bonus point towards those championship standings we're going to see if he decides that he does want to pit um this time as they work their way through the trial but he's not going to come down pit road just quite yet so snyder after starting in ninth has not come down pit road yet under this caution and it appears that he may want to stay out here try to play that strategy yeah the top four have stayed out and it, it can be a risky gamble uh because uh sometimes you just need all the track position you can get and it's a it's a big advantage to have and you're not going to fade as much as or to where you started or where you were running uh however this is a track where if you get caught high especially in turns one and two you can make the high line work in three and four but one and two when you come over that bump uh you have to hit your marks just about perfect uh because it is it is extremely difficult to hold someone off and so you get a train of cars low, it could be a really long set of laps until you're able to find a hole back on the low side. And so that's something that Guy Snyder has to look out for, but he does have three other cars who stayed out, which he will definitely use to his advantage. Uh, meanwhile, Dwayne Vincent, the guys behind him, they're gonna be a little bit patient. Uh, they don't wanna use up their stuff or get themselves in trouble as they move on through, uh, but certainly they wanna take advantage of those tires. So they'll be, they'll be going up there to that lead before long. Definitely the top fours of the front two rows did not come down pit road. Everybody else on four fresh Goodyears uh, on that last pit stop. The lights are off on the Ford First Racing Mustang pace car. So we're going to be looking for the green. The 27 of Snyder is going to be leading us to that. Does Vincent try to make an aggressive move here? Remember, sitting second in points, 22 back with three races to go. Said he has to go for it. So let's see what happens. Pace car down pit road. Guy Snyder right on the gas pedal, not wasting any time. The green flag flies. The top lane does not get the start that they want. So here comes the 10 of John Abbott with the 13 of Vincent in tow. Vincent going to the inside in one. He's going to make it stick as Abbott can't get that grip. And all of a sudden, Dwayne Vincent's in second. Contact with the 19, the 10 now of John Abbott in the back wall. We're wrecking in the back as they all pile them in. The 15 of Rhett McBride, the 10 of John Abbott. They're all in the wall off the corner after varying tire strategy catches up with him in the corner, and we're under our second caution of the race. That is a lot of damaged race cars, and that's a wreck that you could analyze and analyze. Unfortunately, this a lot of times things like this happen with those varying tire, tire strategies, as you said. Uh, new tires converges upon old tires. People are trying to get into lanes, and uh, it, it, it's just extremely difficult to make it work sometimes. Uh, and so they were three wide coming out of turn number two uh, and uh, John Abbott got put in the wall and uh, Barry Hines went down the track to avoid it and that's when he uh, collided with the 26 of Gonzalez and so Gonzalez going sideways down the backstretch after that contact sort of led to the uh, bigger portion of that wreck uh, certainly not Gonzalez's fault whatsoever but let me tell you Bratcher involved the 17 involved Rhett McBride's involved the 26 of Gonzalez has already pointed out uh, looking over here, I think Mark Bratcher's engine is toast. Uh, just a lot of cars involved in this caution. Only on lap 10, right after that right after that restart. And the track was almost blocked as everybody was trying to get through there. Lots of drivers managed to get 
around that. Uh, fairly good job of them for getting on the brakes. Uh, but again, that all happened with the 10 car of Abbott. Abbott actually got a great restart and brought Dwayne Vincent with him in tow on that inside lane. And Vincent, we saw it, he made it stick there on that bottom. Abbott pushed up, got in the wall, and evidently everybody trying to avoid that is what ended up causing our caution. So that is going to bring out again our second caution of the night from the Texas Motor Speedway. Again, let's talk about what these guys are racing for. Race number eight of the chase. Again, Chad Cole, your points leader, sitting in fourth. Vincent, second in points in second position. CJ Lavare, third in points in third right now on the racetrack. Vincent and Lavare have lots of ground to make up with only three races to go. And they are all going again. This uh, The Real Sim Racing Full Total Cup Series brought to you by Bob Earl Racing. The winner after Homestead is going to go home with a VRC Mark II virtual racing seat that is a simulation racing cockpit designed by championship race car driver Bob Earl. Who better than a real race car driver to design a simulation racing cockpit? After all, he knows what it means to be comfortable in the cockpit. The design features a fully adjustable seat and frame. Additional monitor stands and shifter mounts are sold separately. Proud sponsor of the 2013 RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. A high quality and affordable virtual racing cockpit priced at just $349 US dollars plus shipping. See it today at www.bobearlracing.com. And we've heard Dwayne Vincent mention that prize. He was really interested in winning that, and he's still got a shot at it, as do, uh, I believe, three or four of our guys on the top of the points able to win that prize. So uh, it's cool of Bob Earl to put that up for this division. Um, uh, very cool prize. Going to the champion, and um, and unfortunately, this, this race just took a turn in a different direction for a lot of these competitors. Uh, Guy Snyder uh, was certainly about to lose the lead before that caution fell. Uh, Dwayne Vincent was really coming on strong, as well as the four of C.J. Lavare. Uh, Snyder was put into a box where he pretty much had to stay out here because they only went that lap before the caution fell. And so uh, Snyder will stay out, hope not to lose too much track position. And uh, the number 10 of John Abbott, who was severely damaged in, uh, in that wreck, uh, barely got clipped as he narrowly tried to avoid it. Uh, he has taken it behind the wall and retired for the evening. Uh, but this race, is, as we've seen a lot of damaged race cars, a lot of times that lends itself into some green flag racing, uh, which, as you mentioned, Evan, is, uh, is a prominent thing here at Texas. However, again, the start to tonight's race, not quite like that. Again, two cautions so far early in the going on the plate for tonight. 135 laps at this 1.5-mile racetrack being the Texas Motor Speedway. Guy Snyder remaining in the lead. Over Dwayne Vincent, very strong on that restart. Again, made it work on the inside because he had those fresh tires, avoided everything. And another good thing I guess you could note is those top three in the championship, Vincent, Lavera, and Cole, all getting through there. However, one car that you could say was spun out to end up causing that incident entered tonight fourth. That was Jose Gonzalez. He was 40 back, so he really needed a lot of help. And that may have just put the knife in the coffin on his championship hopes as he has um, sustained some pretty major damage in that incident. However, the top three, which everybody's eyes are pretty much on at this point, are still on the racetrack for the time being. Again, being 22 points back and 24 for Vincent and Lavera, respectively, from Chad Cole, they really have nothing to lose. They need to go for it. Chad Cole's going to be looking in his mirrors, trying to make sure that he plays this safe, because he does have a little bit of a cushion, but we all know, it, we all of us know in racing that a 22-point lead can go away in the blink of an eye, as we've seen many times earlier on in the season. However, we are doubling up on the back straightaway, and I do believe we're going to be looking for the green flag to go back racing this time by the start-finish line. Yeah, Chad Cole, as you said, can afford to be conservative. Uh, but you don't want to get too conservative because it might change your style and, and, and you don't want to change what got you that points lead in the first place. And so as these cars are doubled up, Guy Snyder should be good enough, uh, should be good to get a jump here as the leader. However, I think these cars are going to be on him coming out of two, maybe entering turn three. And so Dwayne Vincent wants to get the best restart possible. Starting P2 a little bit rough. Uh, Guy Snyder's off and uh, takes a quick start right as the pace car jumps in. Vincent with a good restart, able to tuck in front of the number four. Actually, the Ford gets the nose there just enough. Vincent giving him that lane, uh, playing it smart here. Uh, but as you see, CJ Lavera on the bottom of the track there, one and two. A little bit, little bit of a bobble. It's just uh, a part of the track that's going to mess with these guys pretty much all race. And definitely the top three right there are actually second, third, and fourth. The top three in the championship all running together right now. Race leader, Guy Snyder, 
Again, not pitting under that first caution flag. Has a little bit of a cushion, about three tenths of a second or so back to Dwayne Vincent, four tenths that last time by the stripe. How long can Snyder hang on up there before these guys, these fresh tires, really kick in? Vincent's going to drop back into that fourth spot, and now it's going to be led by CJ Lever, that charge going into three. Vincent's going to make it side by side now for the third spot as he looks to the inside of Cole going into turn number three. He's going to get the advantage and pick up that spot through the corner as they start to chip away on the lead of the 27. Yeah, and, and Lever in the four is showing some aggression here, getting to that second spot. Uh, we saw him going three wide before that last caution. And now Lever right on the bumper of the 27 of Snyder. Nowhere to go, has to back off in the center. Able to tuck underneath the 27 of Snyder on the exit of turn number two, side by side, heading into, heading into three. The four of Lever able to clear himself, get that lead, is going to lead this lap. But look at there, the number 13 of Dwayne Vincent and the 8 of Cole able to get underneath Snyder as well. Cole still side by side with Snyder for the third position. Vincent already well clear of that. Now has his sight set on the number 4 of Lever. And you can really see the aggression in Lever and Vincent again going for it, really making aggressive moves on the inside of those guys to make that pass. We have some good racing going on in the back of the pack. Let's take a look at the 12 car of Douglas White in the ninth position going into three. He has company, the 17 of William Keff is trying to get on his inside. 12 car getting real loose off the corner, so the 17 is going to go by. And now here goes the 36 of Rich Jett also by the straight. Yeah, while the 17 in front of Rich Jett has damage, that 36 car of Jett looks pretty clean. I don't think there's a scratch on it. And so uh, Jet actually started the race from the 27th position, avoided that wreck, currently being shown in 11th, just 19 laps into these, this event. Uh, so this is the type of driving that we're used to seeing from Rich Jet. Uh, just uh, he, he likes to start in the back, often does not qualify, and uh, actually does not take a time in qualifying, that, uh, tries to start in the back, and then just methodically moves his way forward, keeps his nose clean, and we find him in the running. I believe he finished third last week. Uh, while the 17 of Kemp, looking underneath the 18 of Barry Hines, Rich Jett narrowly keeping himself, or narrowly avoiding a problem. Uh, good job by Rich Jett to avoid the 17 there. Uh, looks like contact uh, coming out of two between Hines and Kemp, uh, but no harm, no foul. They, they keep going and they stay green. How about the 14 of Joey Gatina? Threw it in there, took advantage of it, and picked up four spots in turn number three by being aggressive moving himself now up into a top 10 position. Lots of shuffling going on around this battle that we've been looking at. The 12 of Douglas Wyatt on the top, uh, looking like he's battling a loose handling race car because the 36 of Jet back on his inside trying to battle. These guys are going for that 11th position right now. Side by side with the 33 of David Lanza coming in tow now. Now lands on the inside of Wyatt, this time by the stripe. The 12 car getting into the wall he's slow now he's going to get passed by some more guys the 78 of keith brooks jr is going to throw it in pushing up the hill and almost getting into the 12 but the 12 of douglas wyatt has been dropping and losing a lot of positions in these last few laps as he continues to make contact with the wall yeah it's very easy to do here at texas or pretty much easy to do anywhere it seems like when you get into that box high it's just e it's easy to lose more than one spot uh, because usually you're not alone on this track they're not spread out now all that much because we're so close to that restart but i also want to give a shout out to douglas wyatt for that paint scheme a uh, grave digger paint scheme on that uh number 12 chevrolet ss uh we have not seen that this year to my knowledge uh so uh definitely uh Inspired by the monster truck, I would surmise, and, and that's a good looking car out there as he works underneath the 78 of Keith Brooks Jr. You're seeing a lot of guys running higher in three and four, then one and two. Three and four is less line sensitive. You can run, you could take a wider arc, you can run higher and make it work. And definitely, meanwhile, while all this has been going on, take a look back up at the front of the field. The familiar sight is the number 13 of Dwayne Vincent again in his Haviland Ford Fusion up atop right now that scoring pylon in that first position right now chad cole in the eight moving his way into second and cj laver again third in points has dropped off of that lead position into third these guys have about a second lead over the fourth place car being guy snyder the fourth so very fitting here how at the texas motor speedway again chase race eight not a lot of time left that the top three in the points are running top three on the racetrack right now and shows you that they're going to step up when they need to and battle hard up front. 
and just behind them, the 27 of Guy Snyder, I think his call, uh, needless to say, is paying off as he has found a safe spot here in the fourth position. He's been holding his ground. And the further we go into this run, the tires equalize and he, he'll pretty much be on equal ground with the cars in front of him. Uh, so I was unsure about his pit call, but it was the call to make. I would have been wrong in that situation. I might have found myself in the wreck if I was making the call. So uh, Guy Snyder looking good right now in fourth. Chad Cole, though, stalking Dwayne Vincent up front, uh, not letting Vincent get away. Uh, Cole looking strong, those two Fords right up at the front of the pack. And definitely again, 135 laps scheduled for tonight's race, currently working under the green flag at lap 27. After two relatively early cautions coming out, we're looking to get a green flag running right here at 135 laps at a 1.5 mile speedway. That's just over 202 miles in length. So a very long and challenging race for these guys, but pretty much uh, the equivalency of what they've been running all season long. Again, at 1.5, it's obviously being the predominant track that they see as they follow the, uh, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series circuit schedule uh, as well again on Monday here. Looking right now, 20 cars remain on the lead lap. Last car on the lead lap at the moment right now is the 31 of Jonathan Cadell in 20th and A.J. Brown in the first car one lap down would be the beneficiary and the lucky dog if a caution were to fly in the next few laps right now. Yeah, I feel bad for the 31 of Cadell. He's one of those drivers who I really thought had a great shot at finishing top five tonight. I saw him running some races earlier this week at Texas, and uh, he was very fast, and uh, I thought that he was going to be a factor in this one. Uh, we saw him finish second at Charlotte, leave second as well at Martinsville just last week. Uh, and so uh, a guy who can uh, compete for these wins on pretty much any type of track, if you could compete for the win on either on both of those two, uh, it says a lot. And so right now his car, though, heavily damaged, 21 seconds behind the leader, and he'll find himself in lucky dog position before long, possibly in 10 laps or less. Uh, but looking at the uh, battles in the middle of the pack, uh, it looks like a lot of cars still running actually got some nose damage in that wreck. Um, so we're seeing the field really split up because of it. Uh, we see the same three up front, no change there. Uh, but one of the battles to look at right now as we go through the field, uh, looks like Dave Lonza trying to move his way forward. That 33 is on the 18 of Hines. And uh, we saw Hines not long ago make that incredible save. I believe it was off of turn four with contact with the 17. And so uh, the closest racing right now uh, in the middle of the pack, they're starting to branch apart and, uh, and spread out. Another fast driver at the Texas Motor Speedway that his night already coming to a close is the 16 of Steve Ritter, currently being shown 30th, 23 laps down in the garage remember he brought out our first caution of the race after spinning off of turn number four after getting loose on the apron his night is done he finished top three here in the spring race uh, with the real sim racing full throttle cup series uh, if you take a look at the results from that race again so this is our second stop here this season Dwayne Vincent took home the win earlier in the season Chad Cole second Ritter third CJ LaVar fourth and Ronnie Potts fifth uh, so just some of those guys that we know are fast at this race track to keep an eye on as the night progresses and actually right up front, the number eight of Chad Cole uh, just got a big run out of turn number two, was able to get underneath the 13 of Vincent to take that lead. So Cole going to lead this lap. It's, that's his first lap led uh, this evening. And Cole on older tires here has really come into his own. And as you mentioned, uh, number Steve Ritter won at Kansas in the chase. He has three wins on the year. And so this is really going to hurt him in the points. He had an outside shot to make a pretty big run. Unfortunately, he's going to finish 30th tonight, has already started loading up the hauler. Uh, so to speak, and is uh, on his way out. And uh, so Ritter going to lose a lot of valuable uh, points here tonight. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the, the three guys that he's catching running one, two, three in the race or attempting to catch. Doug Roth in the 43 as well. A strong run so far. We saw him make light contact uh, as one of those uh, wrecks started, or I believe it might have just been contact from a, a close call. Uh, Doug Roth didn't really get any damage in that 43 STP Fusion currently shown in fifth which is a great run and a run that i'm sure he he needs and definitely up front chad cole maintaining that first position opening up a little bit of a gap a little bit of a cushion on dwayne vincent in that second spot uh, is able to make that drive a little bit better it looks like in the middle of the corner off uh, but the eight card definitely leading vincent's not letting him out of his sight however vincent was about three tenths off that last time by the start finish line and in lavare hanging in the wings as well seven tenths off of cole about four tenths off of lavare 
And these top three have really broken away for the pack now. They continue to make up ground as they work around the lap car of the number 26. Um, fourth place position, the 27 of Guy Snyder, is over 3.3 seconds back from race leader Chad Cole. So these top three, again, you got uh, almost the dramatic irony of it. The top three in the points coming into now when it's about crunch time in the season, running one, two, three on the racetrack. Yeah, and these cars change a lot over the course of a run. Uh, which is when you see Cole really at his strongest as he took the lead. Vincent hanging with him, as you said. Uh, now, these cars qualified at a 28.58 for the pole. Right now, last lap, the leader, Cole went at 29.80, so that's a fall off of uh, 12 tenths, 1.2 seconds. And, uh, and this is, it, this is what, as we have a uh, smoke on the, on the racetrack, but I believe he's going to get to pit road and the caution will not come out. The smoke is coming from the number two of Ronnie Potts. Uh, when he had some contact in the last wreck, might have overheated that engine actually caution is out not sure if it's for that engine failure or actually there's a spin on the back stretch 18 in, is involved and also the 33 dave lanza definitely the 33 of lanza up against the inside wall not too long ago caution flag is going to fly this incident happened to mid pack and we take a look at the replay lap number 37 coming off of turn number two lanza getting a run on the 18 car Going off of that corner, Barry Hines getting a little bit loose, it appears, behind the 14 of Gatina. Comes down, making contact with the 33 of Lanza. Lanza and the 18 of Hines both into the inside wall down that back straightaway. Again, iRacing won't throw the caution unless the wreck is on the racing surface and was not with not much of an apron there on that back straightaway that is going to bring out the caution. So this is going to put us under our third caution of the night right now. And uh, group the field back up and possibly take an eye for some pit stops here. Yeah, I do believe we'll see pretty much everyone come into pit road. And uh, Barry Hines there made a mistake that's that it's just very typical of this racetrack at Texas when you're running a little bit high in one and two. Just the the angle of the corner you come down on exit while we watch uh, everyone enter pit road here. Uh, but the uh, Barry Hines, it's easy to get loose. You actually have to back way out of the throttle when you're when you're running kind of high in the middle of one and two to be able to make it work on exit. Otherwise, the rear end just snaps around. And uh, anyone who has run here has had that happen before. And just this time, it was happening to Hines. Unfortunately, uh, Dave Lands uh, uh, getting a lot of damage from that. Uh, so a two car wreck on the back stretch. All of our leaders are down pit road. Uh, I don't believe anyone has stayed out aside from people looking to get a wave around. And four tires will be the strategy called Snyder taking four tires. And it uh, looks like Doug Roth uh, will be coming on fifth just for a second there. I thought he was going to steal fourth from Snyder. Uh, but they're going to actually, Dwayne Vincent with a great pit stop is going to get the lead on pit road. Uh, and so that puts Cole back to second. Most other positions remain just about the same up there in the top five. And definitely, we were about three wide off of pit road. For, I do believe it was the sixth position or so so that was an interesting battle to see those guys uh, hopefully nobody was speeding on an exit trying to gain that little bit of a nose on each other but we're gonna take this opportunity to go to our commercial break so when we come back hopefully some more green flag racing from the Texas Motor Speedway you're watching ETV lives live coverage of the 2013 real sim racing full throttle cup series Come on, low, come on, low, come on, low, come on, low, 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 low
Michael Conti comes up at a corner number four in the checkered flag. He wins his first. Landon Huffman coming to a comfortable lead, coming out of two. He's got about eight car lengths, put it half a second over to Wayne Vincent as Chad Cole works the number two spot. Time is running out. Vincent's got it. Cole wants it to the wall. Chevrolet puts the bumper to the 13 of Vincent. Vincent not backing down. He's in second. You know, we got one car on the bottom. And back live at the Texas Motor Speedway for ETV Motorsports Live's continuing coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series presented by Bob Earl Racing. Again tonight, the Texas Motor Speedway and Chase Race number 8 and Race number 34 on the season. Currently working under the caution at lap number 41. Over the lights are off on the Ford First Racing Mustang Pace Car. We're going to be looking for that green flag this time by as the field works through three and four. Vincent and Cole are going to make up the front row. Yeah, Dwayne Vincent looking to get a big jump on this restart as uh, the pace car about to duck in. Uh, Dwayne looking to be unpredictable here as usual. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And the green flag is out. Actually waited for the green flag to go. Uh, Jack Cole right now under attack. Uh, the 27 of Snyder right on his bumper. The 4 of Siege of Laverde was inside, but the uh, Laverde actually catches the grass in the second dog leg. Gets him sideways. Very easy to do here. And so Laverde will be back to the uh, third position. And actually what this caution that just happened does is it puts these guys on a one-stop strategy. Uh, they might have been a little bit short to make it on one stop before this caution, uh, but now that puts them all on the same strategy. As, uh, as the side-by-side -side racing for the uh, seventh position, the number 04 of Mike King working his way past the 17 of William Kemp. And Kemp got some damage earlier in the race, uh, but was uh, made his move forward uh, throughout that last run, showing a lot of speed uh, despite that damage. Yeah, that 17 of Kemp starting this race in the 17th spot, currently sitting in um, seventh position right now behind the 04 of King. Very, very strong car. You mentioned Hover does have some minor damage on the front end of his Ford Fusion, but battling through it and making a good appearance here tonight at the Texas Motor Speedway. Dwayne Vincent currently leading our field. Chad Cole sitting at P2 right now. Remember, these guys are not only battling up front, but really who's leading every single lap matters because they're going to be looking for those bonus points on who leads the most laps. Dwayne Vincent definitely wanting that. Chad Cole wants it even worse probably because he wants to keep that cushion of a points lead on these next two guys here throughout the next two weeks and eventually take home that championship when we wrap up the season at Homestead. 21 cars right now on the lead lap under the caution flag. A.J. Browning took the wave around and he's already up to the 12th spot so good job by the 22 team for capitalizing on that. Yeah absolutely the 22 of A.J. Browning uh, did have some severe front end damage and that car looking a lot better now. They, they got a lot of it squared away. Uh, still pretty uh, pretty mangled and uh, a bit of a war horse out there tonight for the 22. Uh, looks a little bit like it did it at Martinsville last week where a little cosmetic damage doesn't, isn't too bad, uh, but certainly not too helpful here. In front of uh, the 22 of Browning is the 33 of Dave Lanza who was involved in that last wreck, but his car is driving all right. Uh, he probably has lost some speed in it. It doesn't appear to be yawed quite how it usually would be. I think he's uh, he's having to turn the wheel a lot more left to get that thing to turn. Uh, but right now it's salvageable where he's going to keep driving it as long as it will last. And uh, and these guys are single file for the most part. One guy I want to look at real quick, some damage of his own. The number five car of Bill Tomer in front of Lanza is running a uh, uh, the scheme that Dale Earnhardt ran in the Winston. Now I wish I could remember the year. I'm going to guess that it was 1998. I'm going to say 1998 Winston car for Dale Earnhardt, that Silver Scheme GM Goodwrench service, but I probably got the year wrong, uh, just taking a shot in the dark with it. Uh, but a good looking car, unfortunately some damage for him, but he's got it in the top 10 right now, keeping strong with it after qualifying 23rd. And definitely Bill Tomer actually before the race, uh, having some discussion with the drivers, uh, making a comment out. He really does not like this Texas Motor Speedway and jokingly said he's looking forward to getting lapped. 
Uh, so when you consider the damage on that race car running in a top 10 spot with the competition in this series, very, very strong night out right now in the works for that number five team and Bill Tomer uh, as we are almost 50 laps into this thing. However, the gap at the front of the field is starting to shrink as CJ LeVere, or rather Chad Cole in the second spot, is about a tenth now off the back bumper of Vincent CJ LeVere, dropping back now actually 1.2 seconds back of that battle for the lead up front. Yeah, CJ LeVere, it seems like uh, he can hang with these guys um, and actually was pretty good on the long run last run. Uh, but it's easy to lose touch. Uh, a lot of times what separates people during these runs is who can get that speed out big time at the beginning of the run, but hold it enough throughout the run that where, where they're not caught. Um, and so you need a, a balance of that early speed and that later speed. Um, when you hang back a little bit too much at the start, you could be the fastest car by far in the long run, but it's hard to make up lost ground. Uh, and while the draft is not a huge factor here, uh, the draft is good for a couple miles an hour on the straightaway. Um, obviously, you don't need it to chase people down here, but it is a nice benefit to have. Uh, and so it's working very well for Cole. The number eight, uh, who uh, was pretty much the fastest car in the long run the last run, lost the lead on Pitt Road, and he's right on the bumper of uh, Dwayne Vincent as they work their way off of turn number two. Uh, the two guys at the top, at the front of the points chart, right there together. And Cole ever so slightly chipping away at the distance of Vincent this time through three and four. Looking pretty even. LeVere in that third spot continuing to drop off about 1.3 seconds back. Remember, he's third in the points for so the top three and remain the top three in the championship standings. But Chad Cole is there going into turn one, almost on the back bumper of Vincent. Entering turn one, he lost a little bit of ground this time off of two. Going to lose a little bit more, so dropping to two car lengths back. So maybe a little bit stronger than Vincent. Maybe using a little bit of an aero draft to his advantage there in the corner. But it looks like those cars are pretty even right now, sitting one, two on the field. Yeah, very even. And actually, just to correct myself, it was actually the 1995 Winston Colors that Bill Tomer is running. I just wanted to get that straight. It was not 98, it was 95. Uh, so I'm a little confused there. Uh, but going back through this field, looking for some uh, tougher battles. Uh, Bill Tomer actually right now. The 78 of Keith Brooks Jr. coming down pit road. Don't see uh, what's wrong with his car. He um, got into the wall, nearly wrecked it. Probably had some damage to fix. Uh, yeah, it looks like some handling issues for Keith Brooks. A lot of times when you get some damage, it really changes the handling of the car and uh, that could give you a wild ride where sometimes the best thing is to break down a pit road, repair whatever damage, get the car driving as straight as possible. It definitely not with a lot of cosmetic damage, but it leads me to believe that he must have gotten in the wall somewhere because those last three laps before he came down to the pit lane was all over the racetrack on the apron up to the wall, sideways every which way but pointed forward. Uh, getting it down a pit road, you see sitting there in his stall, so obviously getting some repairs. Unfortunately, having a good night out on the late lap is going to lose multiple laps um, from coming down pit road. Unfortunate for him and his team. Everybody else pretty much single file right now in the lead lap cars right now. Pretty much the closest battle on the racetrack remains the battle for that number one spot because Chad Cole again right up to the back bumper of Dwayne Vincent, letting him know that he is there, sitting about a car length or half off the turn this time off four. Uh, he's there, it's just gonna be a matter of can he get the run off the corner when he needs it to set up and try to make that pass. Vincent maybe running a little bit of a defensive line that time in a turn number one, desperately trying to hang on, lead as many laps as he can, looking for those ever so important bonus points by leading the most at the end of the race. Yeah, and while Chad Cole also wants to lead the most bonus point or lead the most laps to get those bonus points in this race, he doesn't quite have the pressure because of that 22-point lead, and so he can kind of just ride with Vincent, uh, and he's going to go for the lead when he gets a run big enough to go for it. Uh, but he can hang with Vincent. He's in a pretty safe spot right now. He's not mired back in traffic, uh, and he's running behind a guy that he can really trust. Uh, these two have been around each other uh, all year long. And uh, so uh, Chad Cole has to be feeling pretty good right now. Uh, probably wants to see the green flag run continue as uh, we're coming up not, not too long from now. We'll be at halfway in about 20 laps. And so uh, now that the green, rag, green, or excuse me, green flag racing is going on, the field really spreading out and a lot of cars with damage from that earlier huge wreck on the back stretch. I'm actually surprised as I look through the field just how many cars at least have some form of damage. 
And so the battle is on right now for the 12th position. As they're side by side, AJ Browning trying to hold off Steve Gottschalk. Gottschalk clears him though, one and two. It's hard to make it work. The 48 of Kevin Linden gonna follow him on through. Now Browning under attack by the 14 of Gatina. So he's gonna lose three spots in one shot right there. And that's what's so, so difficult about being stuck on the outside in one and two. And definitely remember 22 AJ Browning taking the lucky dog on our most previous caution. Uh, taking advantage from that moving from around the 20th spot up into the top 12 uh, losing three spots there however in about half a lap now putting that 22 back into the 15th position but still in pretty good running from where you considered he was crash on the front straight away we're hearing trouble on the racetrack down low on the track no caution flag is out quite yet but trouble on the track yes yeah, the 18 of uh, Barry Hines, he uh, he had trouble on the straightaway, and he actually cut down the uh, the quarter mile Legends track uh, to get to pit road, which is going to be a pit road penalty. Not that it matters. I think his car is severely damaged, so he just wants to get it repaired. Uh, Looking, it was actually he caught the apron coming through three and four, got him sideways, and uh, it sent him around hard into the wall. The caution didn't come out uh, because he was the only car around, and so the leaders came up on him. Uh, but he was still moving in a forward direction once people were near him and uh, he got it out of the way to keep this race green and uh, so that's some uh, courteous driving there from Barry Hines to keep the green flag out just wanting to get out of the way and uh, so kudos to him for that. Uh, the 17 of William Kemp actually just losing a few spots. Uh, he had been running in 8th. I believe he just got passed by a few cars getting stuck high and falling back to 11th. And one of the movers through the field talked about a little bit earlier, the 36 of Rich Jet. His car still looks clean. Uh, that Amico paint scheme, uh, reminiscent of Dave Blaney from uh, about a decade ago. And he's up to 7th. He started 27th. That's 20 positions forward. And he's closing in on the 43 of Doug Roth and the two cars in front of him, which are uh, Snyder and Mike King. And where have we seen a car get in trouble getting on the apron in turns number three and four earlier on in today's race? Well, it's the guy, the number 16 of Steve Ritter, who again brought out our first caution by that same incident, had a fast car, evidently took him out of the race. And that was pretty significant contact for Hines. Interesting that the caution was not thrown as uh, he did go around uh, on the racing service. However, never came to a stop, got off the racetrack quickly. And that will keep us under our green flag. So the, I'm sure the race leaders appreciate that. But some of these guys that their cars starting to go away here in the long run probably were hoping that they could have got a caution there to come down and reset their race cars right now. Last car on the lead lap is the 62 of John Wilco. He's on the backstretch as race leader goes into one. So he's about 19 seconds behind the leader and just over 10 seconds front of him until he would lose his lap and become the first car one lap down we have no cars one lap down as nick silver in the 19th position he is off the racetrack behind the wall in the garage the 20 set to 25 deciding to call it quits after uh making some contact with the outside wall uh so he is back behind the wall his night is done as well yeah nick silver had a lot of damage both to the front and back of his machine from that earlier wreck and uh his car had some pace to it, but he really couldn't race where he, he uh, was before. And uh, deciding, you know what, we're not in the points. Uh, he just took it behind the wall. A lot of attrition. As you said, 18 on the lead lap. There's only a handful of cars running. Uh, some of them sitting on pit road repairing damage who are uh, not on the lead lap. And so we really only have 20 cars uh, currently still looking to compete. 18 being on the lead lap. And, uh, and Rich Jett. Uh, just got by the 43 of Doug Roth moving Rich Jet up to the sixth position. Now he has a sight set on Mike King in the number 04, who he's chasing down to Guy Snyder in front of him. Uh, CJ Lavare really in his own world right now. Lavare is two and a half seconds behind the leader in a strong third place, and Lavare has put two and a half seconds on fourth place. And so it's one of those interesting feelings when uh, when you just can't keep up with the leaders, but you're you're really just pulling away from everyone else. I definitely can see his leaders in front of him in his windshield starting to uh, almost get out of sight. And then you can see in his rear view mirror, Snyder, in that fourth spot. Again, you mentioned about two and a half to three seconds behind him. So really, uh, it puts him in an interesting position because he can't really judge his line based off of any other cars around him. He just needs to play it smart, keep it off that apron, hit his marks, and run solid lap times. The battle, however, continues to be on up front because Chad Cole has really not left that vicinity about five feet off the back bumper of Vincent 
these last couple laps as we do pass the halfway point into this race so we are going to give you a full field rundown but Ch chad cole in that second spot just letting Dwayne vincent know that he's there and if you make a mistake he's going to be around him so full field rundown the top 10 right now race leader Dwayne vincent the number 13 second place chad cole third cj laver fourth place guy snyder the fourth fifth the 04 mike king rich jet in the 36th Sitting in 6th position, 7th and 33 of David Lanza, just getting around Doug Roth. Doug Roth now in the 8th spot, ninth Brian Harvey. 10th place, William Kemp, as Chad Cole gets to the inside of Vincent up front. Yeah, and looking uh, behind the top 10, Kevin Linden looking strong in the number 48 right now in 11. Steve Gottschalk still running that, that classic 1976 Pepsi Lenny Pond scheme. Currently showing 11th and his car is pretty clean. Just some very, very minor right side damage, probably not hurting him too much. Uh, the 14th of Joey Gatina currently being shown in, in 13th. AJ Browning currently in 14th. Bill Toma rounds out the top 15. Uh, Douglas Wyatt in the number 12 currently in 16th. And John Wilco is the last car in the lead lap right now being shown in the 17th position. Ed Williams Jr. still in the race, two laps down though. Uh, lost two laps on, with a pit stop, I do believe. Currently being shown 18th. Nick Silver has pulled it behind the wall. Currently in 19th. Barry Hines was fixing damage on pit road. Uh, was too much damage to take care of. He has actually taken it behind the wall as well. And he rounds up the top 20. A couple of guards, uh, excuse me, a couple of cars I think are going to uh, remove them from the top 20 and gain some spots here. Uh, but a lot of cars left down behind them. Chad Cole, now your race leader to finish up the full field rundown. 21st position is the 78 of Keith Brooks Jr. He is on pit road servicing his car about 19 laps down, or 12, I do believe, at the current moment. Jose Gonzalez, 22nd, is behind the wall. Rhett McBride behind the wall in 23rd. 24th place car, Ronnie Potts. His night is done. Jonathan Cadell behind the wall in 25th. Brennan Mercer, 26th, is also out of the race. John Abbott, 27th. Turnmeyer, 28th. Ratcher, 29th. And Steve Ritter, 30th all behind the wall their nights coming to a premature end as well so about a third of our field is in the garage and having a rough race but right now chad cole finally getting around vincent and putting about three tenths on him for the race lead yeah and i think the way vincent was feeling the pressure uh, the lead change actually happened uh vincent came out of turn number two did this long slide up the track maybe it was uh it looks like he just got tight uh, but also a possibility is uh, you, can, you can get the car loose at a turn two and you don't want to turn the wheel too much because you can feel that the rear end's about to step out and so a lot of times you wash up the track that way. But I think Dwayne just got tight. Uh, and he, he scraped the wall. A little bit of right side damage on that number 13, uh, Haplin Ford, but uh, it looks like, uh, I, I, I don't believe his car's hurt too bad. You can get away with a little bit of that here. And definitely Cole continuing to open up a little bit of a gap once he finally got around Dwayne Vincent up there. Currently has a four-tenth of a second lead right now over Vincent in that second spot. Uh, you have to keep an eye on how long will Chad Cole lead laps to try to challenge how many Vincent has led. Again, these guys pretty close in the points. Chad Cole up in first place. And uh, the top three are the same that the points are right now. So Chad Cole, points leader, race leader, Vincent second in both. Vincent 22 points behind Cole. And then Lavera in third, 24 back. So again, all those points. The Vincent and Lavera cannot win this championship unless Chad Cole makes an error. They can go to victory lane every time. But if Chad Cole finishes second, it's going to be to no avail. So Vincent needs to get as many points as he can and put the pressure on. But he's losing now on Chad Cole almost seven tenths back right now as Cole starts to open up a lead here due, through this long green flag run. Yeah, certainly the advantage is in Chad Cole's corner right now. Uh, and Dwayne, Dwayne might have hurt that car a bit. I'm not sure if he's going to have any damage to fix on pit road, but the lead is steadily increasing a little more than I expected, more than uh, certainly last run when Chad Cole got the lead. And, uh, and while they space out a little bit, pretty much the whole field is spaced out. Uh, everyone is single file getting into that groove and this is that stage of a run uh, where it's hit your marks don't and you you fall into this uh situation where you're trying to gain time on the people in front of you and the easiest thing to do is to overdrive turn number one and that's the last thing that you want to do uh, because low and slow is the way to get around texas turn number one and uh real quick while everyone is uh spaced out here or uh spread uh, spread apart i want to take a look at that number 66 of brian harvey uh we see him running top 10 pretty much every race, running a different paint scheme this week. 
Uh, that's the Hot Wheels Vintage Racing Chevy SS. A very cool looking paint scheme. Uh, looks like the car is clean. I don't see any damage whatsoever on it. Qualified 15th, driven up to the 8th position, and right now trying to chase down a 3-car pack in front of them, uh, which consists of the uh, Rich Jet has just moved into 5th, Mike King is in 6th, and Dave Lanza currently in 7th. So Harvey right behind these guys, pushing his way forward. Definitely a very sharp looking race car. Don't think we can get a die cast of that, but definitely good looking one with that hippies paint shop decal on the quarter panel. A sharp looking ride for sure. Let's take this moment to talk about Inside Sim Racing. Inside Sim Racing sponsoring the Thursday night Real Sim Racing Asphalt Assault Series that you can see right here on ETV Motorsports Live. Inside Sim Racing, your first and best choice for all the news and reviews in online motorsports. Join Darren Ganji and Sean Cole for the latest and greatest in product reviews, simulation auto racing games for PCs and the Xbox crowd, from steering wheels to full-size racing rigs, updates on popular racing games, and a whole lot more. The yellow pages of online auto racing inside sim racing has it all. Visit them at www.isrtv.com. Chad Cole now with a second lead over Dwayne Vincent and continuing to pull away as the laps tick by at Texas Motor Speedway. Again, we passed the halfway point. And just about 14, 15 laps or so ago, so we're on the downhill slope of things, and Cole is doing what he needs to do to protect his points lead. Yeah, and these drivers pitted at the uh, lap 38 caution, uh, which means that they can go to a, uh, about another 20 laps from now on fuel. I think in about 15 to 20 laps, we'll start seeing green flag pit stops from most of the cars in the field. A few drivers have short pit trying to take advantage of that. And uh, Cole right now in the number eight, running really nice lap times, and he's really fought, coming, you know, just coming to a rhythm, which is uh, all you can ask for. He's he's about a tenth of a second faster than Dwayne right now, uh, pulling that tenth every lap. The lead is up to 1.2 seconds, and Cole staying in the t low 2970s. And this stage of a run, that's a very good benchmark. No one in the field is replicating that at all, and so Cole is starting to pull away. Uh, and a lot of distance between these guys. Uh, the closest battle on the track right now, uh, well, William Kemp and Kevin Linton uh, are right near each other, as well as uh, Doug Roth and Steve Gottschalk. Uh, but uh, also Rich Jett, Dave Lanza, actually the 66 of Harvey. The 66 of Harvey just getting underneath the 04 of Mike King, and as that battle starts, it's already finished. Uh, Harvey able to clear King, get into the number seven, the seventh position, and so another spot right there for that Hot Wheels machine. Definitely all the top runners right now, actually fifth position all the way back to about 15th or within 10 seconds of each other, so lots of battles on the racetrack right now, side by side for the 11th spot. How about the 91 of Godshock? We talked about that in the retro number 91 Pepsi design. He's inside of the 43 of Doug Roth. Roth moving up to the high lane in one and two. Gonna allow the 91 of Godshock by an AJ Browning in the 22 is going to go around as well. So he's gonna lose two positions. Actually, there's a car spinning on the front stretch. It's the number 12, Douglas White. Right now, he's out of the way. I don't think the game will throw a caution for this right now, especially because he's going to uh, proceed to the apron. Uh, he's not going to drive it on a pit road because he doesn't want to get a black flag. Although, he's moving on the track at a slow speed. If anyone's coming, that might trigger the caution flag. And it looks like we're going to be safe. Got in the wall off four in that grave digger design that we talked about earlier in the number 12. He was the last car on the lead lap, and once he reached that first dog leg there in the quad oval, the thing just did not turn. He smacked the Texas sign on the outside wall, spun her around into the infield, not triggering the caution, coming back out. Uh, right now, currently running right up next to the wall, giving everybody as much room as possible to not interfere with the racing. But a tough night uh, for him. He was running again on the lead lap, last car on the lead lap. And then as soon as he smacked the wall off four, really just had no chance once he got into those sharp turns. That's another thing about the Texas Motor Speedway is that front straightaway. Again, uh, you can consider it a tri-oval as a, uh, or a quad oval as opposed to a tri-oval because of those two sufficient dog legs there on the front stretch. And evidently that's what's gonna put him in the wall and still down on pit road, gonna come down this time around and try to see what they can salvage out of that 12 car. Yeah, I think what actually, what actually just destroyed that 12 car was uh, 
He spun the tires in the middle of the back stretch. Surprisingly easy to do here. As a 17 of William Kemp is going to come to pit road starting uh, green flag stops. He wants to short pit, get some spots. But what happened to Douglas Wyatt is uh, he rode the wall in three and four after getting into the wall in the back stretch. It broke his car. Uh, he literally could not turn it down. Looking at the uh, onboard telemetry, seeing how he was driving it, and he he was literally full lock left, doing all he could at a slow speed, and the car just wouldn't turn. And so something broke on that car when he originally hit the wall, uh, entering turn three, I believe. And so that puts a, another car with a lot of damage. He loses a couple laps, and uh, and he has brought it to pit road where he's repairing it. And so uh, Doug Roth, one of the drivers who also came down for a green flag pit stop to short pit. Uh, Roth being shown 15. Uh, we saw Roth running in the top 15, top 16 in that 43, or excuse me, what am I saying? Top 5 or top 6 for quite a while in the beginning stages of that run. Towards the end of that run, he fell to the teams. Uh, he was running about 13th, 14th, right before he came down pit road. Decided to get those fresh tires, try to take advantage of them. Right now being shown 15th, and uh, actually two laps down, so he does not want to see a caution. Uh, but he's about to get by the number eight of Chad Cole with those fresher tires right on top of the leader uh, Which uh, should a caution fall uh, Come out if he's in front of Cole. He'll be able to take that wave around to get back on the lead lap Joey Gatina also coming down pit road. So the green flag pit stops starting to come in the cycle I do believe the 33 David Lanza may be hitting the pit lane this time There he is. He's on the brakes off of turn four down to the apron and he's going to come down pit road, so lands of the fourth place car, hitting pit road. Rich Jet behind him is going to stay out for the time being, and this puts all eyes on those leaders as the 43 of Roth is going to get his lap back the old-fashioned way, and a past race leader being the 8 of Chad Cole. Uh, so Doug Roth is going to get now one lap down, uh, returning the lap after getting around Cole that last time by uh, at the moment. So everybody starting to cycle through their pit stalls here and uh, make their pit stops as the four of Lavert wrapped his up that last time by. So now it's just a question of when Lever, or rather when Chad Cole and when Dwayne Vincent, the two race leaders, decide to come down and how this will all shake out after those drivers you mentioned short pitting, trying to make up a couple tenths or so on the racetrack. I think those two drivers are really just watching each other and they'll let everyone else do what they like and they might try to stay out as long as possible. Dwayne Vincent's strategy might be uh, to uh, stay out as long as he can until uh, fuel becomes an issue. Uh, I think Chad Cole is going to do whatever Dwayne does and vice versa. Should Chad Cole come to pit road, Dwayne's not going to stay out because he doesn't want to lose a bunch of time with the older tires. And uh, so I would expect Dwayne to short pit. He just doesn't want to short pit too soon. Uh, but I think the 13 car will be the first out of the top two to come down pit road. And that might be just a few short laps from now as we're within, we're within about seven or eight laps from as far as he can go, uh, if my calculations are correct. And so I would expect him to come down pit road soon. Uh, but a lot of the other guys in the top five still staying out. Guy Snyder has not come down pit road. Rich Jett's still out there. Brian Harvey's still out there, as well as Mike King, Gottschalk. Browning and Bill Tomer. Race leader Chad Cole is going to hit the pit lane this time off of four coming down to pit road doesn't look like he speeds in so a good stop for Cole. Vincent is going to stay out and lead this lap and assume the first position nine car is on the lead lap right now. Chad Cole down the pit lane this should um, inspire you could say those other nine drivers on the lead lap to wrap up their pit stops and set us up for the race to the finish. And then a question always is, will we see a caution and how will that play into this? If you stayed out longer, your tires might be a little bit fresher enough to make a difference. It would be to be determined over Chad Cole down pit road, getting his four fresh good years and going to leave the pit road with a fairly good stop. However, you do lose a lap at this racetrack down pit road. So Cole's going to lose a lap to race leader Dwayne Vincent as things continue to cycle through. And actually, I think the best strategy for Dwayne Vincent at this point, now that Chad Cole was the first to come down, uh, since since Chad was the first and Dwayne would have a hard time making up any ground, I think what Dwayne is doing here is staying out as long as he can while Chad is trapped a lap down. So that if a caution were to fall, that gives Dwayne the track position and uh, gives him the uh, advantage. Uh, obviously, Cole would have to take a wave around should a caution come out before Dwayne has to pit and uh, that'll put the race into Dwayne's favor. And so that 13 car gonna continue to stay out until the last possible lap uh, because uh, the, the, tire, the damage is done to the tires. He's gonna lose time to Chad, and so might as well try to beat him on the strategy here this way, which is his best bet. It's his best gamble to make. 
22, AJ Browning wrapping up his pit stall, so he's coming off of pit road after making his green flag stop. The 04 of Mike King slowing that Ford Fusion down off a turn four this time by pitting from the fifth position. Now the five of Bill Tomer, last car in the lead lap, sixth position. Again, talking about that Dale Earnhardt Goodwrench silver scheme on the inside and three and four coming down pit road. Uh, to make his stop as well. Rich Jett announcing he's going to come down pit road from the fourth spot. Brian Harvey says he's going to come down pit road also in the 66 from third, which leaves Snyder and Vincent. Actually, Dwayne Vincent down pit road. He's going to make his stall, so Guy Snyder's going to assume the race lead. Yeah, exactly. 60 laps since he pitted for Dwayne Vincent. Of course, a, a couple of caution laps thrown in. Uh, he's probably he's uh, running about as far as he could. Going to lose some time on Chad Cole in his pit stop sequence, uh, but I think he had a big enough gap that w uh, the strategy call that he made there was probably the way to go. Uh, I think he will be able to, to come back out of the pits in the second position. And so Guy Snyder is still out there right now, and he's the one trying to stretch it as far as it'll go. His lap times are pretty good for that deep into a run hanging into the 2980s. Of course, losing a lot of time on the cars who pitted already, uh, but he looks like the lone car that has stayed out there so far. He's the final one on the track who hasn't pitted. And definitely, so things beginning to cycle through. Everybody has pretty much come down to make their stop. Step four, race leader Snyder is the 66 of Harvey is on the apron. Uh, back up the speed after completing his stop. So it's all about when that number 27 decides that it's time to make his stop again, trying to stay out in case of a caution to try to get some track position. Um, take a look right now, two cars on the lead lap, Guy Snyder and Chad Cole. Everybody else a lap down right now as things continue to cycle through under the green flag pit stops, but things pretty much wrapping up with those pit stops. Indeed, as the race leader is slow off four down onto the apron, needs a nice clean exit or entry rather, plays it a little bit safer than we've seen some of those guys get on the pit road, but evidently race leader coming into that pit lane to make his stop and will put Chad Cole back up in that lead position now with about a 10 second gap over Dwayne Vincent in third. Yeah, that's the price that Dwayne paid for the strategy of sticking out as long as he could. Dwayne actually lost a spot through that sequence uh, to CJ Lavera. However, much fresher tires for Vincent. He actually just pulled off a pass one lap ago, Vincent did, on the four of Lavera. Already pulled a heck of a gap, something like eight or nine tenths, just in that one lap alone uh, with the much fresher tires. And so Vincent is back up to the second position here, one, uh, one lap from now when the scoring updates and they are past Guy Snyder. Uh, Snyder going to pay for uh, staying out as long as he could in terms of uh, lost time, but now he's going to have the freshest tires as uh, Dave, Dave Lanza in the 33 goes on by Snyder. Snyder's going to fade in line in the sixth, or excuse me, the fifth position. So only one one spot lost there for Guy Snyder, but those fresh tires, he's going to get to fourth really quickly. And definitely, so now if we take a look at the laps currently working under the green flag, race leader Chad Cole, along at also being your points championship leader, currently working lap 103 of 135 at the Texas Motor Speedway, the Great American Speedway. Again, you're watching ETV Motorsports Live, live coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series presented by Bob Earl Racing again tonight, race eight of the chase and race 34 on the season. My name is Evan Prosoko, Harrison Widelitz. Join me up in the booth. We're gonna see the shootout to the finish now. Do we see a caution? What happens or will Chad Cole hang on to his eight second lead, go to victory lane and continue to defend that points lead? We're gonna find out here as the laps continue to tick away. Well, this race sure has a green flag look to it. Uh, as, as this time by the stripe, Chad Cole uh, entering turn number one with 31 laps to go. Uh, and so that is about half of a half of a fuel run uh, for these vehicles. Only 14 on the lead lap after the green flag pit cycle, and Chad is actually entering a lot of lap traffic here. We've got uh, Joey Catina in 14th right in front of him, AJ Browning as well in 13th, and then ahead of them there's four cars all together, and uh, that's the battle for 9th back through 12th. Uh, those cars up there consist of uh, Lyndon Roth, Gotchuk, and William Kemp. Uh, who's been putting together a solid race here, and I believe it's his uh, Full Throttle Cup debut. Uh, and so Cole's going to have to deal with lap traffic. But the good news for him, though, is uh, despite Dwayne Vincent chasing him down with the fresher tires, uh, that gap from 10 seconds down to about 8.5 right now. 8 seconds is a, is a large gap, and so Chad could take his time 
and really work through the lap traffic at the pace that he desires. Yeah, definitely just to put that really into relation, Dwayne Vincent coming off four as Chad Cole starting to make his rounds through one and into two. So definitely a big gap for Chad Cole up at the front of the field right now. Going to try to maintain that and hang on to pick up the victory. If he does get that win, he's going to get those bonus points for leading the laps, possibly leading the most laps. We don't know. Uh, Dwayne Vincent trying to pick some up, but definitely Chad Cole, if he picks up these next 30 or so, will lock those up as well and look for a max points day at the top of the points put even more pressure on Vincent and LaVare as they need to make up even more points in only two races going into Phoenix and Homestead to close out the season after all of, uh, after everything's been said and done and uh, worked through AJ Browning last car on the lead lap right now 20 number 22 rather in that 13th spot so 13 drivers on the lead lap right now and then four additional drivers one lap down everybody else um, from there on back in the garage yeah, a lot of attrition, a lot more than I expected here at Texas Motor Speedway. More than the usual, but you know, you get that big wreck on the back stretch that blocks the track early on right after a restart, and that's exactly what happens here. And so uh, Dwayne Vincent narrowing the gap a little bit, uh, right now at 8.1 seconds. However, by the time that the tires start evening out between him and race leader Chad Cole, uh, the, the gap will probably be in the 6.5 to 7 second range, and that's why Chad feels incredibly safe uh, with pitting early there. Uh, and so uh, he is catching this lap traffic coming up on AG Browning the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet Currently running in 13th, which uh, is uh, not a bad run at all. He had a he had a solid qualifying effort in 8th uh, Currently uh, running that damaged car in 13th about to lose the lap But a decent showing and uh, they're catching the cars in front of them uh, Really quickly as uh, in no time. They'll be right on the 1743 the 48 and 91 and that's a uh, battle for ninth position, which really goes to show that the pace that Chad Cole is running. Yeah, all those guys in the risk of losing their lap relatively soon here as Chad Cole continues to knock off fast laps, having a 29.6 last time by the start finish line as he now works around the number 22 car uh, to put him a lap down. And it really shows the the atmosphere of this race. Chad Cole, eight seconds over Vincent. Vincent, about four more over Lavare. And then pretty much everybody from there on out, about 20 seconds off of your race leader. Cole uh, mentioned at the beginning of the show that I figured that tonight, you know, Texas normally has a green flag atmosphere. Not really what we saw at the beginning with two major incidents and then the third caution shortly thereafter. But since then, it's been clean and green. And will it be clean and green to the checkered flag as Chad Cole continues to knock off laps as we are now approaching just over 20 laps remaining in this race. And Chad Cole, again, his distance between him and Vincent narrowing now to 7.9 seconds, but nothing that is threatening to him up at the front of the field. Yeah, and certainly if you're Chad, you're feeling pretty good because uh, if I could bet on it, I would put $10 on this race going green to the end. Uh, looks like everyone under control for the most part. Some guys really fighting their cars, though. There are no sure things in racing, and that's why we run the races on the track and not just by the stat book. Uh, but Cole feeling good right now. Uh, Vincent, uh, as you said, narrowing that gap, really pulling away from third place CJ Lavera and on back. Uh, the battles, really the battles on the track are all happening in front of our leader. Uh, as the 43 and the of, of Roth and the 17 of Kemp uh, battling for the, uh, I believe that's the 11th position, Kemp holding off Roth as uh, Roth gives way to the leader, that 8 car of Cole. And now Cole working on the 17 of Kemp and... Uh, and this battle was a four-car battle that was very close, but uh, usually you give them a couple laps and they start spreading out. And that is uh, to Chad's advantage as he works high the 17 of Kemp, uh, because now he's only got the 48 and the 91 ahead of him, and they're separated by, uh, by about three-tenths of a second themselves. And so Chad really not getting held up at all, uh, as Dwayne has cut the lead to about 7.4 seconds. Uh, but simply, if we stay green, that's not enough. This time by is going to be 21 laps to, or excuse me that's it's going to be 20 to go i was looking at the wrong car 20 to go for chad cole this time by everybody coming across the strike to take lap number 116 of 135 chad cole losing a sufficient amount of time you could say to Dwayne vincent vincent now within 7.3 seconds but again that comes with chad cole maybe taking a little bit easier around the lap traffic uh you know getting around him a little bit more carefully because he is playing defense at this point Vincent 
playing some offense, probably driving that car a little bit harder to try to make up anything. Remember, a caution could still fly. Will it happen? It's unlikely um, from what we've seen. But we have seen some guys get, you know, get on that apron in three and four, spin around uh, by themselves. Uh, but we have we've also seen several incidents where a car did get in the wall, did crash, and we did not see a caution. So it all depends on if an incident were to occur, does the iRacing service doubt or deem it necessary to bring out a caution flag? But right now, Chad Cole looking like he is going to finish off this night and uh, finish off a strong night for him for sure and look to pick up the win and extend his points lead. And if he does go to victory lane, it will be his 10th trip there this season. Uh, Dwayne Vincent having 13 wins this well, so these two guys at the top of the field definitely very strong. And how about CJ Lavera again in third position, third in the points without a win, but he has 10 top fives. So we definitely know that four car is strong, but he has yet to have been able to capitalize this season and see him in victory lane. So the question would be if we see a caution, does that four make his mark and finally get to victory lane or does he do it in the coming weeks? Because we know that that four car is strong. It's just a matter of finishing it out for Lavera and his team as they still look for that elusive victory on the season. Yeah, CJ Lavera, you could say he has been too solid. Uh, just uh, not quite getting into victory lane, as you mentioned. Uh, but he's been right there, and he's only uh, going into tonight 24 out of the lead on the points sheet. And uh, one of the guys, I've mentioned his name a couple of times, pretty much the closest battle on the track is for fifth right now. That's the number 04 of Mike King. He's trying to hold off the 33 of Dave Lanza. Lanza getting a lot of damage earlier on in that crash with uh, Barry Hines off of turn number two. Lanza's car, you know, it looks pretty rough, but it's carrying speed and uh, he's doing a great job with it. But Mike King in that number 04 at Ford Fusion, sponsored by Can-Am Racing Series. And uh, we've mentioned him a few times, but he's been battling in that top five all race long, uh, doing what he needs to do. I believe coming into this event, 10th or 11th in points. And so this is a run that he needed after a lot of a rough stretch here in the chase. And definitely right now, nine cars remain on the lead lap the last car on the lead lap is that number number 91 of steve gotchalk 29 seconds behind cole or you could calculate that and say he's about a second in front of cole as chad cole starts to approach him off four and put him a lap down which would evidently leave eight cars on the lead lap the laps continue to wind away just about 14 or 13 laps to go here at the texas motor speedway chad cole championship leader is doing what he needs to do coming into tonight's race Dwayne Vincent and CJ Lavare maybe in a more con or a more aggressive and less stressful position you could say because they have nothing to lose they're going for it Chad Cole we uh, we thought that maybe he'd run a little bit conservative but with the race car that he has had tonight is showing it and he is up front looking to pick up again race win number 10 and extend his points lead and put even more pressure on Vincent and Lavare with only two races to go as the 91 of Gotch Chuck yields to Cole so Cole's gonna put him a lap down which leaves eight drivers on the lead lap and not many laps left to go at Texas yeah Chad is a driver out of Wisconsin I believe and so his favorite driver is Matt Kenseth uh, who has a reputation in the Cup Series as he's fighting for the Cup Championship obviously this year with Jimmy Johnson. Kenseth is a driver with a lot of talent, a lot of speed. Uh, he shows restraint though. He's very smooth, very consistent, and he can get those wins. And I think growing up watching Kenseth, Chad Cole has really sort of modeled his driving style after Kenseth. As we've seen tonight, he hasn't been overly aggressive, but he can be aggressive. He's got a lot of speed, a lot of straight up skill and talent, much like Dwayne Vincent, who he's racing hard for this title. Uh, but Chad Cole really uh, getting the lead tonight off of a minor mistake by Dwayne and just carrying that on and leading the rest of the way up to this point. And so very similar, Matt Kenseth and Chad Cole and, and Cole looking to get this victory tonight. He doesn't have very long to go. Next time by the stripe is going to be 10 to go. And remember, when we get to five to go, a caution would end the race. And so more than anything in the world, much like the guys in Sprint Cup want to get to that white flag, Chad Cole wants to get to five to go. Definitely, that's another thing that determines or changes the outcomes of many of these races is there is no green-white checker system in iRacing. So you mentioned once we get to about five laps or less, if a caution were to come out, it does indeed end the race because simply there's not enough time to get everybody gridded back up. So it's not uncommon to see two lap, one lap shootouts to the side things. Obviously in those scenarios, the advantage would go to the uh, man going to the restart because again, 
Um, with the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series, the leader determines the restart from when the pace car hits pit road till the green flag flies, and that's why we see Dwayne Vincent. You, you talked about it um, on our previous restart, how he likes to mix it up. Sometimes they'll go right away, you know, sometimes they'll hang back and go after the green flag comes. Uh, so that's another part of the strategy that really plays into all of this. Uh, but with only eight cars on the lead lap and the pace that Chad Cole keeps up last time by, he ran a 29-7, Vincent a 29-8. So Vincent, after making up a couple tenths, after Cole had to negotiate some lap traffic, has dropped back to about 8.1 seconds off of Cole. So even if we do see a caution, I don't know if Vincent really has a car to challenge uh, Cole for. Remember, if you remember last week at the Martinsville Speedway, Dwayne, Vincent, Chad, Cole actually tangled together and wrecked for the second spot, put them both about a lap down with damage. Uh, so that is what ended up giving Chad Cole, ended up gaining one point line. But Cole, definitely strong car tonight. Uh, his number eight Ford Fusion is going to come by the stripe to knock another lap off that counter, and that victory is getting oh so closer. Yeah, and, uh, and, and make no mistake about it, Chad Cole fast on the short run, but I think this is his wheelhouse right here. He's very consistent, very smooth, and I honestly believe that all the time in the world on this racetrack is how you hit turns one and two. Chad is not overdriving one and two at all. You see him back up early enough, and you do a lot of coasting. You're just rolling to the center of that corner, and you wait to get on the gas. It takes a lot of restraint, a lot of restraint to wait on the throttle with 900 horsepower just at your fingertips. Uh, but he's uh, he's lift he's he's lifting early, coasting, coasting, coasting. You go over that bump and you start getting on it pretty hard. And so Chad, at the end of these runs, really has his car where he wants. He's he's got his tires where he wants them, and uh, that's where he really pulls away. Uh, Dwayne made up a lot of time early on too because he pitted later, so he had fresher tires by about uh, seven or eight laps, if I recall. Uh, but Chad, right now. Uh, stretching that gap back over to uh, over eight and a half seconds. Now we're within five to go, so should a caution come out, the race would be over. Of course, that doesn't mean that Chad is safe. He'd have to get to the checkered flag, but also, if a caution happens in front of him, he could be involved. Uh, so there's no really safe feeling, but he's breathing slightly easier now that we're within five to go. This time by is going to be four. That's what makes the uh, the format here with the chase for the championship so unique. Obviously, the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series following the points and the season um, that is equivalent to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, the B Series, the uh, Real Sim Racing Asphalt Thursday night running that of the Nationwide Series, is that when you're going for the championship, unlike most sports, we don't just take those competitors and put them out there together. These guys still have to deal with all of those other drivers who want to spoil the party and get to victory lane and every position matters on the racetrack, which is what can shuffle things up, but definitely a dominating performance by the top three drivers. Cole, Vincent, LeVere, pretty much up there all night long, are the top three in the championship, and they're showing why. So it looks like going into Phoenix next week, Cole's gonna extend his points lead and just put even more pressure on Dwayne Vincent. But again, anything can happen in racing like the phoenix international raceway uh, that track definitely very tricky for sure and then homestead an interesting track some of these drivers um i mean you really cannot call this championship until you get the white flag at homestead but you talk about the white flag chad cole that time by the stripe has taken two laps to go next time he will get that white flag and he'll be looking for victory number 10 on the season yeah and the biggest battle on the track right now is four fifth Mike King is under attack by the 36 of Rich Jet. This time by, they're taking two to go. They're about 23 seconds behind the leader, and uh, Mike King trying desperately to hold on to a top five spot. Rich Jet and the 36 all over him. Jet looking low, but not quite there. King is going to shut the door uh, with the position entering the corner. And so space between the uh, top four in the race, and then the battle's on for fifth here. Dave Lanza in the 33, not too far behind them. And so, uh, but Chad Cole right now, on his final lap, working down the back stretch, entering turn number three, Cole just uh, half a lap away from victory lane. Definitely working lap 135 of 135 it is Chad Cole this time. He's in the trial, he's gonna get to the checkered flag, and Chad Cole is gonna pick up race win number 10 on the season, going to victory lane, extending his points lead. Dwayne Vincent coming home second and the first man over the radio congratulating Chad Cole is that 13 of Dwayne Vincent. Yeah, and the 36 of Rich Jet trying to get the number 04 to overdrive turn number three, which he does. Does he have enough time to get to fifth? The answer is no. He's going to 36. 
Wow, 36, you, you can tell Rich gave it all he had. And he actually lost a spot. He finished se uh, seventh by uh, two hundredths of a second. Dave Lanza beat him out. Uh, but that, that just, Rich Jet put it all into that corner. Just barely missed uh, making a run on the 0-4 of Mike King. Mike King gets that top five spot. That's good. That would be an interesting screenshot to see at the start finish line, the 36 upside down with the destroyed front end. He went for it off turn four, had nothing to lose but one spot, and uh, could not get it done in the end. But in the end, Chad Cole, a dominating performance tonight, um, leading the most laps, maximum points day for that eight team going to victory lane. We are going to go to a final commercial break when we come back. The post-race show, we're going to talk to the top three finishers and get you guys set up for next week at Phoenix. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's ETV Motorsports Live's continuing coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. And welcome back to ETV Motorsports Live's live coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series from Texas Motor Speedway. Chase race number 8 is in the books. Chad Cole going to pick up race win number 10 on the season. Going to victory lane and Harrison Weilitz is down there in victory lane with him right now. Yeah, Chad Cole, 10th win of the season. Uh, right uh, with a, I believe that extends the lead to 25 points. And so, uh, Chad, uh, you know, you could have come into this race, played it safe, knowing that you had the points lead, but clearly winning was on your mind. And so it has to feel good to get your, that, your 10th win of the season. Yeah, it really does get that number 10 and that feels great. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not here to points race. I'm here to win every damn race. And, uh, last year, uh, Landon and RJ Williams, they really took it to me in the chase and I decided that ain't going to happen this year. So I, I'm actually practicing a lot more going into these final 10 and, and I feel I had some results earlier in the chase that didn't really show it. And this one, it really shows that the work is paying off big time. It seemed like the best part of uh, the, the long run came right at the end. It seemed like you were really in a rhythm. And as you were, as the tires had most of their wear on them, you were able to capitalize. Uh, what would you say you were doing to really, get the most out of the car with the tires at their oldest? Uh, just just really try to be patient in the early going. You know, some guys really try to get their passing done early. I just try to try to lay back and let the tires come in, let me get a rhythm, because I really need, like, about 10 laps to 
get rhythm, get comfortable. And uh, I was just kind of trying to pressure Dwayne there. And uh, he kind of has slipped and hit the wall a little bit in two and was able to finally get around him there and uh, pull away. And with Homestead being the final race of the year, probably races somewhat similar to Texas as far as uh, driving style. But of course, Phoenix next week is a whole other thing, a very different style. So how do you feel heading into Phoenix International Speedway, raceway rather? Uh, I really had a good run in the spring there. I really felt I was behind uh, coming into the race because I didn't really practice a whole lot. I really spent about like the first half of the race learning and <laughs> learning from everyone else watching them and i didn't really get the result i wanted there but uh, i like phoenix it's a fun track i feel feel good there i'm just gonna have to practice practice again and practice some more and i really need to thank uh, my fearless teammates jose and cj and doug they're they're night owls like me so so they they keep me up there uh, they'll they'll do practices with me and that just keeps me going and uh homestead i'm not really sure yet uh I haven't been there in a cup car, I don't believe, so kind of unsure about that one. Well, tonight, notching that 10th victory of the year, the points lead should be uh, unofficially about 25. Uh, not sure if you led the most laps or if Dwayne was able to get that, uh, but certainly a, a nice lead heading into the final two. You mentioned your fearless racing teammates. Uh, who else would you like to thank? Who makes it happen for the eight bunch? Yeah, Hippie Doug, Hippie's Paint Shop. Uh, you can find him at facebook.com slash hippies paint shop. He's got a gallery there, beautiful cars he does for me, and uh, Axo Sanitation out of New Jersey. And um, Bob O Race Chassis, of course, for the full throttle cup prize. That's uh, tonight's winner, Chad Cole. I believe Evan has caught up with uh, second place finisher. And that's right, we're down here on the pit lane with Dwayne Vincent. Dwayne, you've taken home your number 13. In second position after qualifying on the pole, uh, how was the night for you first and foremost? It was a a great race, man. I just I was having to push it too damn hard to try to stay out front of of Chad. You know, um, he's just so damn good on the long runs. I had nothing for him, but uh, it was a great race. We got to take a look at the championship. You entered tonight second in the points, twenty two back. You really have nothing to lose and everything to gain at this point on out. After finishing second, Chad's going to extend that lead a little bit. Only two races to go. How are we going to approach those races, and how do you feel at those tracks, being Phoenix and then Homestead, Miami, to wrap it up? Uh, I'm just going to approach him just like I do every week, man. Just, you know, try to practice and uh, be my best. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Chad is, is so good at staying out of trouble. Um, between my own mistakes at Kansas and Martinsville and getting into other people's mess, uh, it kind of ruined my chances. Um, 25 points is a lot to make up in two races against a driver like Chad Cole. Anyway, let's talk specifically about next week again, going into Phoenix. 13 wins on the season, so some impressive numbers. We know you can get it done. Uh, how do you feel at that track, and uh, what do you think it's going to take for you to get the victory lane and for you to make up enough points to be there with Chad going into Homestead? I I, I like Phoenix a lot. Um, I think I won here in the spring. Um, I, I really do like the track. Um, I, I If we could stay out of trouble, I should be okay. Definitely. Well, hey. A top two finish, nothing to be ashamed of at Texas. Another top five to add on to the season, but you're definitely going to be looking for victory lane next week as you do every week. Who makes it happen for you in that number 13 team, and any shout-outs do you want to throw out there? I just want to shout-out to Bob Earl for sponsoring this stuff. Uh, all you guys at ETV, uh, all the guys at RSR, uh, my teammates are red-ass, and uh, my dad at home uh, watching this stuff. We, we tried. Hey, congratulations on a top two. Good luck in these next two races. Thank you, buddy. So, Dwayne Vincent's going to come home in the second position. Next week, we go to Phoenix, where he won in the spring. Harrison, I do believe you're down on pit road now with our third-place finisher and third in the championship standings right now, C.J. Lover. Yeah, C.J. Lover coming into this race third in points, uh, 24 back, going to leave about 28, 29 back. Uh, but we saw early on C.J. was aggressive, making the moves, uh, settled into third, uh, where he ran for pretty much the second half of the race. And uh, looking back at that, CJ, 
Uh, run us through your race. Uh, did you pick up on anything the guys were doing in front of you that uh, that uh, you thought they were beating you at or you could have really used to your advantage? I don't even know. I, I tried to save my tires thinking it would help, but I was I was just burning my stuff up trying to stay with them. I just I didn't have anything. We tried. We tried our best, but our best just wasn't good enough. And uh, some bad luck for the guys behind you in points tonight. No Jose Gonzalez damage early on. Ronnie Potts blew, uh, blew an engine. Uh, Snyder, however, with a solid fourth place finish. And so you really got a buffer zone in third, and you're right on top of Dwayne going into the final two races. And so certainly, if you, yeah, you have a shot at the championship, but you also have a really good shot at second. So you gotta, you gotta feel like you have, uh, you're in contention. Uh, you know, you, you never know. St stuff has happened. You know, we just we try to stay in contention. That's all we can do. And we really like to get a victory before the the season's over. And we got two races left, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, and speaking of that victory, it reminds me of Casey Kane's rookie season in Cup uh, because he ran second just about everywhere. Couldn't get himself in a victory lane. Got ten top fives on the year. You're constantly up there, and uh, it's a shame that you haven't gotten that first one of the year. Uh, certainly capable of doing so. And uh, looking at Phoenix and Homestead, which track do you think provides you the better shot of getting into victory lane? I like both tracks. Uh, you never know. Uh, Phoenix, I, I'm more of a short track guy. So I'm I'm hoping for that that one there. You never know. We got a lot of work to do, and I got a good teammate with Chad, and we do a lot of work together. So maybe I'll learn a little bit from him this week. Yeah, and to correct myself, that was the 11th top five of the year, 10 going into tonight. And so uh, a solid third place finish heading into the final two events. Shot at the championship and a really good shot at uh, second in points as well. And uh, so who makes it happen uh, for the Ford Bunch? Who would you like to thank? i got to thank all my teammates at Fearless Racing. Uh, also got to thank Hibbs Paint Shop for painting my cars. RSR, Balboa Race Seats, Real Sim Racing for putting on the show, and ETV Live for the awesome broadcast. That's tonight's third place finisher, CJ Lever, and uh, throw it back up to uh, Evan. And definitely Harrison, another great nut of racing from the Texas Motor Speedway. Again, a uh, racetrack that's known for its green flag runs. Not really what we saw in the open going, about three cautions there in that first third or so of the race. Two of them happening fairly early on. We have to look forward to next week after tonight. Again, Chad Cole. Uh, gaining a little bit in his points lead, but with two races, still a lot can happen. Chad Cole just needs to be consistent. Uh, Harrison, i got to talk to you about next week again. Phoenix International Raceway, a one-mile track. Um, I mean, how do you think the race is going to go there, and how do you think this championship battle is going to shake out um, with a track like that? Obviously, Dwayne picked up the win at that racetrack earlier on in the year, so I guess you could say that gives him a little bit of an upper hand, but he also said 25 points to pick up on a guy like Chad Cole is not an easy task. Yeah, and uh, the thing about Phoenix, though, is it seems that uh, restarts are pretty volatile there. Uh, we see a lot of restarts rec uh, restart wrecks at Phoenix, but also it's a variety of racetrack that's pretty different. It races like New Hampshire, races like a few of the other flatter tracks, but it's really its own animal. Uh, but, uh, two ends of the racetrack... Are, uh, they're, they're very two different corners on both ends of the racetrack. And so it takes a really specific driving style and uh, sort of a wild card in that sense. Uh, there's some beating and banging. There's not as much breathing room as there is at a track like Texas. And so it's really different than what we've seen in the past couple of weeks. And definitely, again, Vincent picking up the win in Phoenix in the spring. Chad Cole finishing 24th. CJ LeVere finishing 12th. So who knows what can happen at Phoenix again. A mile racetrack almost has a little bit of a short track mentality. Not a lot of room like Texas. Obviously, Texas, you know, your typical 1.5. Lots of room. Um, and you got to look, lots of points battles, not for only the lead. Um, I know you touched on uh, with Lavera there trying to, you know, hang on to a top three in points. There's lots of drivers even that have faded from this championship picture early that might be trying to battle for a top 10 in points, like a Mike King sitting in 11th on the outside looking in, or even a Mark Brad you know 108 back entering tonight so we we really don't know what we'll see uh, but there'll be a lot going on and uh, it, it should be make out for a good race next week yeah absolutely uh, mark bratcher is a guy who can run top five at a lot of these racetracks uh he's had a lot of bad luck in this chase and as mike king showed uh, he's very competitive himself got that fifth place finish tonight and he's also one of those drivers where it just hasn't come together for him in this chase 
Uh, Steve Ritter's another driver back there in the points who has to hold these guys off now after a disappointing finish tonight. Uh, meanwhile, Guy Snyder is looking to finish top five in points. After tonight, I believe Snyder is actually fourth in points, uh, but Jose Gonzalez and Ronnie Potts are going to be right on him to get that position back. So that's pretty much going to wrap things up for us from the Texas Motor Speedway. Again, another great race. Lots of green flag actions. We saw some cars get a bunch of short, torn up sheet metal, and several guys, their nights ended up in the garage. So a, very, a varying race depends on who you ask about it and how their night went. Again, next week, we go to the Phoenix International Raceway for Chase Race number 9 and Race number 35 on the 2013 campaign again the real sim racing full throttle cup series live on etv motorsports live brought to you by bob earl racing and the bob earl racing mark ii virtual racing chassis as well that's what all these guys are going for so for harrison wyless my name is evan pasoko for jd web engineering laura lawson on the cameras we will see you next week at phoenix and don't forget to tune in tomorrow night on etv live for the nascar iracing.com pro series at nine o'clock eastern